The region is facing significant challenges, not least of which is the number of conflicts that are currently taking place, uh, the large number of refugee and displaced populations. We're looking at a region that currently uh, uh, has 5% of the global population and yet is, has produced more than 50% of the global uh, refugee and internally displaced populations. There's also a significant rollback in development, example in education, millions of children are out of school either as a result of conflict or as a result of socioeconomic deterioration. The gap between the uh, haves and have-nots is growing, uh, in other words inequality is growing in the, in, in, across the region, both within countries but also uh, uh, with, uh, across between countries. Um, there's also a lot of polarization, an increase, an uptick in polarization based on identity um, and uh, a significant downturn in economic activity as a result of COVID, especially in the Levant and in the, in, uh, in the, North, and the North Africa regions. Uh, what all of this means is that uh, there are structural problems uh, that countries in the region are grappling with. Uh, and that rather than resolve these structural problems, we have additional uh, challenges being uh, accumulating one on top of the other. And I think this is, and it, to add to all of this mix, of course, is the fact that the region in general has become a playing ground or a sandbox for geopolitical rivalries, uh, whether it's Russia, China, uh, Iran, uh, the US, among many others. I think this is where the EU can come in. Uh, and perhaps engage far more actively, both in terms of finding and uh, uh, pushing for political solutions to the current uh, conflicts, helping the region identify a new security architecture, uh, in addition to its ongoing hum support for humanitarian, uh, the, the multiple humanitarian crises uh, in the region that go from Yemen to Lebanon, to Libya, to Syria, to Iraq, and other places. Mm -hmm.